Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through a way to add a bit of dynamic text to the page or bookmark navigator. Now, as you can see below here, there was a question from a user, Nate, on a comment from a previous video that I did, where they were asking if there was a way to dynamically change the text at all. Now what I came up with is a solution that actually lets you, as you can see here, change between two different values. So each single text value for this page navigator can show two different values depending on if it's quote unquote active or inactive. Now I utilize some layering and other techniques to achieve this just with two objects onto the page. So let's go ahead and see how I applied this and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start with, like any of the other videos, let's see the output of how this looks. We can see here that we have a page with summary, which is the active page that I'm on, that includes an icon for the pin. So in addition to the color, it makes it apparent that this is the actively selected page. If I select on details, you can see that it re-renders and it changes the text to also include the pin. Plus this text with the pin is staying center aligned to the button. And the same applies to each one of these pages. So Thankfully, I had a question or in a comment in a video that alluded to this as a thought for if this is possible or not, and I did figure out a way to do this. It does require two objects or two navigator buttons instead of one, but I do want to show you how to build this in Power BI Desktop. So let's go ahead and flip over to there. So now that we're in desktop, again, we can see that for the page that we're on, the text changes to show a pin to help emphasize the fact that we are on a current page. We can come to the details and see that that visual loads. Now the trick with this is the fact that I have two different objects layered here. I have a page navigator sitting on top and a bookmark navigator actually sitting in the back with the alternative text showing. So I'm going to come to the forecast tab here and I actually have the two different visuals sitting on the page for the bookmark navigator which is in the background and the page navigator which is sitting on front. And the way that I created that effect with all of these alternative texts for the buttons back here is I'm actually using a page navigator and a bookmark navigator with them sitting on top of each other. And if I was to use the drag and drop method to place this on top, you can see that when the page that I'm on is selected, the actual button itself is completely invisible. So it's not actually showing, which is allowing the background button from the bookmark navigator to show through. So the effect at least when they're sitting on top of each other is that the alternative text shows and then this lower section here, and then the lower section on the bottom, just for context, coming back to the summary page, I've actually hidden that behind, in this case, the matrix table, just to give it a little bit of a pop out effect to kind of have it in line with the other visuals and integrate it in the page a bit more. So coming back to the forecast page again, and let's separate these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to the bottom, and I'm gonna start the conversation by showing you this. So essentially what I did, is I actually created four bookmarks with the same page names, but with the different title of the pin inside of here. Now to do that, I wanted to make sure that I created bookmarks that didn't activate anything. So I actually just temporarily created a new page. I went to the bookmark section here. I simply just added four different times a bookmark for each of the titles that I wanted. So basically just added a bookmark. I renamed it to the appropriate name for summary, details, analytics, and forecast. And I use the Windows Emoji Keyboard, which is Windows key and colon, and that pops up this little menu where you can actually search by category and use any rich colored and multicolored emoji that you can then incorporate into the title. So that's how I created all of these. And because it was created on a page that I can then delete when I'm done, that bookmark won't actually activate anything. It's really only here to service the titles for that particular bookmark navigator that we're having sitting here. And the configuration for this, for the most part, I just went up to insert and I reused some of the settings from my page navigator. So I went over to the buttons, I did navigator, I did bookmark navigator, and then I reused some of the settings. So as an example, I can come to this, I can use from the home page, the format painter, select that here. There we go. Now, one thing I just need to do is to make sure it's the same type of shape or container. So I'm going to go to shape, change that to rounded rectangle. There we are. And I also want to make sure that it is set to the group so it's only including those titles right here that are inside of this bookmark group that's related to the pages. And then from there, because I'm using Snap to Grid, which is a very useful feature for alignment, which is found under the View tab, Snap to Grid, which is turned on here. 
it's very easy to place these at the same heights and widths that they need to be to be able to then stack these items directly on top of each other. So that's how I was able to create that background effect for the bookmark navigator that has the alt titles that I would like to have passed through. Again, showing you from the actual summary output pages, we have the summary, the details. So now this top one for the page navigation has transparent colors showing that background button, showing it here as well. And again, coming back to the forecast for the demo, let's take a look at this bottom one now. So what we have here is the page navigator that's the actual thing sitting on top. And let's see how I was able to get the selected value to not display. So putting that back down for context, I'm gonna close my bookmark and my selection pane, open up the format painter. We're gonna come down to style, and I'm going to change the state to selected. And now notice right here for font color for both text and for fill, there's an F of X button in here, meaning I'm using a measure to provide the color. Now if I clear these out, you can see that there is an actual selected color into here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them back just for a second. There we go. So I'm actually harvesting a measure that has a transparent color in this that was applied using the F of X button. Now at the time of making this video, I did notice a bug where if I clear this, the color will be a default of white. Select the F of X button. I can come up to gradient. I can go to field value. And I should be able to actually set the color in here. Now the issue right now, if I try to set it to transparent color, it won't actually let me do that. I feel like this is a bug currently in Power BI. If you first select a number of value that I've found, I just put sales into there. It does technically allow me to place it here. Nothing's gonna happen for the color other than returning the default. But if I come back to it now and then change it to the transparent color, it now seems to allow it to be selected in there and then it actually does clear it out. So again, I feel like that's a bug, not a feature, but just something to be aware of. But I did this both in the location for the text color and for the fill color. And essentially what I have is just a measure that's sitting in my model that's a transparent color. Zoom in a little bit. Doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's an invalid hex color that's being provided as a text output in quotes. When you provide it with that, because it can't render this color, it essentially renders it as transparent or invisible. So it has the achieved effect of disappearing. And again, when stacked, that allows that background button to pass through with the alternative title. So each title that you have for either a bookmark or a page navigation, in theory, you can provide it alternative text that you can then format. And with all of these things as well on this back button, not only could you do the actual text, in theory, any other effects for stylings, I wanted to go to this menu, or the text, fill, border, shadow, any of these can be customized, the height of it. So if you wanted it to be a little bit higher, so you can design basically an alternative button however you'd like for the background when the button is selected or deselected, so to speak. So two visuals that are used to create this stacked effect. It would be nice if you can do it in one, but as a double-edged sword scenario for this, it's not that bad having to build just two unique objects onto the page. And the achieved effect, at least, coming back to the summary, is you do get a bit more freedom to be able to customize these and have a bit more control over the text and the design between selected and deselected that you don't have with just a single visual. Hopefully this is something that you find useful. Again, with a lot of these, I love to find creative ways to utilize and layer stuff in Power BI. And this effect, I think, does achieve what I'm kind of looking for, at least with providing that alternative text for a selected value. I'd love to hear how you uh, would potentially use this in some of your reports and data sets or other ways that you might think of being able to implement something like this. So please drop those comments, suggestions, or other questions down in the comments down below. If you like this video, as always, please check out some of my related content in the upper left over here. And otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you find this content useful. And otherwise, thank you again so much for watching. I hope you all have a great holiday, and I'll see you next time.